Look again, y'all, everyone. The Starlight Let's Player is here, and welcome to part four of Skullgirl's Second Encore. So, last time we completed a uh, Parasol storyline. Now, this time, we're going to be completing Peacock storyline. Holoduke, oh, Hive, meet Peacock. Lab 8's magnum opus. So this is Project Peacock. I've read your papers, but I'm embarrassed to say that I can barely follow them. Well, I'll explain. Project Peacock is equipped with not one, but two synthetic parasites. Uh, Lab Zero has created one other like her, but more uh, extreme methods were required to complete the synchronization. Two synthetic parasites? Regulating the soul contamination must be difficult. Indeed. But with the proper Theonite balance, I think we could graft even more onto future subjects. The Argus system not only lets her see everything, but the eyes also generate powerful Z-rays at the precise wavelength needed to disrupt the Skullgirl's essence. Hey, Gramps. Shut it. I'm busy here. Oh, the Avery unit is admittedly a bit less well understood. Oh, we designed it to be a spatial link between her body and Lab 8's vast underground arsenal, but oh, she's doing things with it I never imagined possible. Seriously, Doc, shut it! Let's get into the good part! To think that poor mutilated orphan I found may be the one to defeat this Skullgirl once and for all. Oh, hot tootie fighting indeed it is. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this is Peacock. Uh, she's... Uh, <laughs> her real name is actually Patricia Watson, and she's actually a survivor of a no man's land, just like uh, Sarah Bella was. And she was rescued by Dr. Avian and was transformed into an anti-Skullgirl weapon in order to, you know, defeat the Skullgirl. So yeah, as you can tell by her design, uh, she's pretty much a reminiscent of like like the old cartoons. She has a lot of crazy, she has a lot of wacky, uh, let's say wacky antics, and as well as uh, as well as having two parasites. By the way, yes, two parasites. Usually, certain characters have like at least one parasite or, or like a living weapon, but yeah, Peacock has two living parasites. Uh, one of them being the Argus system. As well as her second parasite being her partner Avery. Uh, which is, by the way, Avery's voiced by Christine Marie Cavanos, the same voice actress for Philia, by the way. And as for uh, Peacock, she's voiced by Sarah Ann Williams. And if you've known her, she's known for being the main voice of Uni from the Neptunia series. Uh, she also voices many other shows as well. Uh, there's even one show one Hello Kitty show that's actually been like running since 2022 so yeah she's been uh voice acting for quite a for quite a lot quite a while 
And I really, I, I really do like her voice a lot. I think she's really amazing as uh, she's really an amazing voice actress. So yeah. And uh, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, she was rescued and turned into an anti skullgirl weapon. And, you know, remember when I said that, uh, the quote where Marie pretty much said, uh, that Umbrella reminds her of an old friend? That old friend happened to be Peacock. And you'll see once we get to her, uh, well, you'll see once we actually get to the end of Peacock's storyline. But let's just say that, uh, Peacock has a lot of various weapons and attacks. Like this one, where she like she pulls out a giant bomb, and the more you keep hitting it, the more it explodes, and it does a lot of damage too. I really do like her attacks a lot, and though, and it can be really, really cool to ch use a lot of uh, combos with it. Man, who are all these posers getting between me and the Skullgirl? Don't they know who I am? I was built to beat Skullgirls. The sooner I get done with that Skullgirl. Sooner we can get back and watch Glorious Annie, Symphony of Star Stuff. Yeah, I gotta get back in time for wrestling. Oh, I heard Beowulf's coming out of retirement. Ah, hold it, everyone. We got a message coming in from Dr. Avian. Coming, Rock. Get ready. Lab for attack. The doc's in trouble. Whoever it was, they really did a number on the lab. <sighs> Patricia. Did you hear that? I think I heard Doc Avian. Dr. Avian! Who did this to you? Lab Zero. Valentine betrayed us. She let the Skull Girl in. Which way did they go? They fled to New Meridian. Follow, but make sure the others are safe. I know you can protect everyone. I know you can defeat the Skulker. He's gone, boss. Guys, get ready. Pissing me off is the last mistake those idiots will ever make! Squawk! I see her, boss! The school girl is right over there! Wait... It can't be! Marie? She's the school girl? I'm sorry, my child, but your reunion with Marie will have to wait. She has important business to attend to in the Grand Cathedral. Another peacock? Looks more like a dodo to me. Extinct! Enough! Avian's legacy ends now. So yeah, a lot of shit actually happened in that cutscene. Lab Zero pretty much betrayed Lab 8, and unfortunately, it pretty much caused Dr. Avian to lose his life. Which pretty much pissed off Peacock, and now she's on the hunt in order to destroy the Skull Girl, as well as ruin Lab Zero's plans. Which, by the way, Lab Zero is actually thinking in real life. I shit you not, this Lab Zero games is actually Lab Zero is actually a reference to Lab Zero games. So, and they were one of the people who was actually responsible for Skull for like the updates for Skull Girls as well. So yeah, that's kind of crazy. And yes, I was not lying when I uh, when that bomb actually does a lot of damage. But it's not just that, she also has another blockbuster move, which uh, actually lets her arms actually shoots lots of laser beams as well. So, yeah, Peacock has a really great arsenal of attacks and weapons, and I really do like playing this her a lot. But yeah, one thing, one downside to that uh, bomb is that if you, if you also get too close to it, you'll also take a lot of damage as well, so do keep that in mind. Hello, nurse! Nice place you got here, by the way. So, Lab 8's ultimate weapon finally arrives. I never expected you to be double, but don't worry. I'll be fitting you with a toe tag shortly. So why'd you do it? Oh, 
both of our labs are supposed to be working together to destroy the Skullgirl. And you let her write to us! As though I'd explain myself to a child. We came to stop Dr. Avian's work, and that's what we did. You really think I'm gonna let you walk out of here alive, nurse? I don't think you have a choice. I'll admit you were almost an interesting opponent, but infected by Avian's philosophy of weakness, you're nothing more than garbage. Double, it's time Lab 8's final experiment came to an end. Squawk! We'll show you weakness, Lady! We are gonna murderize you. Time to die, traitor! Yeah, what they said. We're sending you straight to hell for what you did to the duck! Yeah, I was kind of hoping for a Valentine to at least explain to Peacock as to why Lab Zero would betray Lab 8, but nonetheless, we're facing off against her yet again. And I, I want to say, I actually love that opening line that uh, Peacock says whenever you are uh, before facing up against Valentine. Like, it's so fucking appropriate. Like, god damn. <laughs> I mean, what you expect? She's like wearing, she's wearing, she's wearing nothing but like, she's wearing nothing but a nice uniform with actual, with black, I believe black panties on, with her, with a lot of cleavage hanging out. And no one, and yeah, no wonder she would say that. Hello, nurse. God damn. <laughs> uh, but I digress. Uh, yeah. One thing I wanted to point out is that. Earlier, um, during, earlier during, I believe, Skullgirls or Skullgirls Encore, uh, those weren't really pink crosses to begin with. They were actually red crosses, but due to some controversy, uh, they had to, uh, they had to update it and change the color of those crosses to pink in order to, in order, to, in order to avoid, I believe, in order to avoid more backlash, or I believe, or I believe, uh, I don't know much, but like, you should check out Sensor's Gaming's video on Skullgirls. It's really good. Uh, I've already uh, covered it, but yeah. I will say Peacock is a very interesting character to say the least. Like I said, she pretty much like represents the whole like 80s to 90s cartoon vibe, especially with that whole trait hot 2D gaming, uh, well hot 2D fighting to say the least. Not to mention she loves to smoke cigars. And the smoke just come out of her eyes, which is odd to say the least, but that's Peacock for you. Marie! Patricia, you should not have come. Do not worry about me. My quest is nearly at an end. Oh, please! Don't worry about you! Some hellish MacGuffin has turned you into an undead killing machine! And I was created to stop you! There's no way you can beat me! So of course I'm worried about you! Look, Patricia. You will understand. Whoa! Is that... him? So all these people are... Evil. From the slave traders of Ramograd to their patrons, the Medicis, all must perish. Patricia, please leave. I cannot guarantee your safety much longer. You know I can't do that. It must be taking everything you've got to fight that thing inside you. One of these days, you'll slip up and you'll be just as bad as those guys. Or worse, you leave me no choice but to beat you down, blow you up, and rip the skull heart right out of you. Let's hope there's enough of you left that we can sit down with some pie together when this is all over, okay? So yeah, it's worth noting that, uh, well, Peacock, or Patricia, whichever you want to call her, she and Marie were actually good friends, and by the way, they're both the same age, uh, Peacock and Marie are both 13 years old, so, yeah, 
Peacock, she used to be an orphan slave, and her but her body was gruesomely mutilated by slave traders that captured her. The same slave traders that you probably already saw. But she was, again, she was rescued by Dr. Avian's anti scogo labs, and she was rebuilt with an arsenal of biomechanical weaponry. That being two parasites, one of them being the Argus system, which was augmented into her body, and the Avery unit, which gave her access to unprudential weaponry. So yeah, they were able to give her all of that, but her mind still is still of a little kid, considering that she loves to watch cartoons. One of them being uh, Annie of the Shooting Stars, by the way. And which, by the way, uh, when she, the main character of that show is actually a DLC character. Yeah, if you haven't really played Skullgirls, I recommend you give this a shot. And I recommend you also get the DLC as well. Because, like, the fact that they were able to bring in characters that have been mentioned in this game as DLC is actually really brilliant. Especially considering that they brought in one of her, uh, one of her idols, her cartoon idols to say the least, which was Annie of the Shooting Stars. So that's actually, <laughs> that's actually crazy. But like, another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, uh, she has, since she has a love of toys, the cartoons pretty much shape her uh, new toys into a terrifying gang of cronies, which you've probably already seen. One of them happens to be an anvil, anvil named Andy. <laughs> so yeah. I appreciate you trying to put up a fight. Now, about the skull part. Who needs wishes? I'm already the strongest there is. Foolish child. Do you really think this is over? Right, Marie? Right, Patricia. I'm sorry I ran away that day. You stood up for us, and I ran. When I found the skull heart, I thought maybe I could make things right and punish the people that did that to you. We're good. You'll always be my friend. Got it? That makes me happy. Tell you what. I'll pick up where you left off. Now that I beat you, saved the day, and it's rerun season, I don't have much to do. So why not? Well, that, and bloodying those mafia fools sounds like a hoot. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Patricia. It was good seeing you. One last time. Then let me tuck you in for your final bedtime. So yeah, that's Peacock's story. It ends with Peacock defeating Marie in the end, but with them say saying their goodbyes. So yeah, I wasn't lying when I said that Peacock and Marie pretty much has a past together, and they were actually best friends. So yeah, and it also ends with Peacock now facing off against this new char this character named Black Dahlia, who is also a DLC character, by the way, and she just came out months ago. So once the uh once all the DLC characters are fully well not fully voiced but once all the DLC character storylines have been fully voiced, I'll I'll jump onto those storylines as well. But that's gonna be for like a long time considering that uh Marie's actually coming out in 2024. So I want to keep that in mind. But uh yeah, one thing I also want to mention is that every character pretty much has different color palettes, and each color palette actually references certain like media from cartoons to tv shows to video games and other types of media 
And one of my favorite palettes for Peacock is the Princess Daisy palette. Yeah, each character pretty much has up to 28 pal color palettes. And my favorite one is the 20 is co the color palette 21, which is the Princess Peach colors. Well, Princess Daisy colors. Yeah, I really do like it a lot. And the fact is, is and the fact that that color palette reference my favorite character from Mario really says a lot, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be uh, that's pretty much gonna be it for this story. Uh, I don't know which story I'll do next, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see next time. But until then, this is the Starlight Let's Play signing out. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like. Also, comment down below as well as subscribe and hit the bell so you can join the Star Nation. But uh, until then, yeah, as always, Goki Genyo and have a Star Tastic Day, everyone.